Ah, Concord. It's like the red-headed stepchild of the video game industry. Everyone loves getting their lumps in and making fun of it because it's just so damn easy to do. What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Smash JT. And apparently the latest blow to Concord is Sony has proactively started to delete the game from people's consoles. People that purchased the game. And yes, Sony is issuing refunds and being proactive about that, but now they are going to the next level and removing the game without you being able to stop them. Ah, oh, come on, don't you just love the future of gaming? Smash JT. Hit that subscribe, give me a like, and check out SmashJT.com for the full article breaking down how Concord just can't seem to find a way to go and die quietly. It always has something happening that has people like, holy crap, Here's the latest thing that is unprecedented in the video game industry. And yes, I'm sure it's happened before. In fact, I think Xbox accidentally like had sales on games and, and took those games off of people's consoles. So it's, it's not the first time I've seen it happen, but it's very rare and always gives me that uneasy feeling knowing that these gigantic corporations can technically legally go into your console and take a game off the hard drive without you approving it. I'm not a big fan of that. In an unprecedented move, and man, I feel like I'm saying that a lot when it comes to Concord, Sony has begun manually removing the digital versions of Concord from players' PlayStation 5 consoles connected to the internet. This move somehow marks a new low for the troubled history of the hero shooter, raising lots of questions about the game's future and whether it will ever see the light of day again. And for those of you that might have already forgotten, I don't know, there's a lot of news and things are coming and going pretty quick, but when Concord was taken offline less than two weeks after launch, Sony made the announcements that it was going back for some retooling in hopes to relaunch again someday in the future. But doing stuff like this makes me feel like Sony is looking internally and just being like, I think we got a tax break coming to us because we can't ever release this game again. Released with literally zero fanfare from the masses, Concord quickly turned into a financial disaster for Sony, amassing what some have estimated upwards of $250 million or more lost over the course of the last eight years of development, including marketing and everything else going into this game. That's a big chunk of change to just swallow and move on. Like, yeah, I get it. You're Sony, you have billions of dollars to your name, but 250 plus million dollars is a lot of money. The game servers were shut down just over a week after launch and full refunds for every purchase was issued to players. While the server closures are not uncommon for live service games, the complete removal of Concord from players' consoles takes this situation to an entirely new level. And like I referenced earlier, how Sony talked about how they're going back to the drawing board and retooling this and hopefully relaunching it someday in the future. Well, it doesn't look like that's going to be happening. The more information that I get from this and what I'm seeing, it feels like everything but that. And then I go over to LinkedIn to see what's going on at Firewalk Studios. And there's a lot of people going into work every day there right now. And you got to wonder, what are they doing? And what's their mindset to be going into a company where you are the laughingstock of the video game industry and everybody who's anybody was telling you whatever you were doing along the way, gamers don't like it, we don't want this, you're injecting stuff we don't want in a game, it will not be successful, and you stuck your fingers in your ears, blocked out all the noise, and moved forward anyways with it, and here's the result. And it's really hard to feel bad for any of the situation because at the end of the day, it was completely avoidable. If you were among the dozens of folks who purchased the digital version of Concord, you will be greeted with a notification on your PlayStation 5 home screen that reads, thank you for being a valued PlayStation customer. Live service for Concord went offline on September 9th, 2024. The game is not playable. And as a result, we have removed this content from your account. So not only is the game unplayable and you can't progress past the start screen because it's a live service game, but now even if you wanted to keep it there to be able to show your friends or point and laugh or even be like a digital collector, it's gone. You can't. 
they took it from you. So I guess it's part of like the what you sign up for when you log on to the PlayStation account and you create all this stuff. One of those things is Sony can just do what they want with your account at any time, even without your authorization. Adding to all this confusion is the fact that Amazon's upcoming secret level anthology series still plans to feature one episode based on Concord. That one episode that was supposed to help promote and market this failed game is still going to move forward and happen. And I can't help but think when that day happens, it's just going to like stir the shit barrel up again. All the scum on the bottom of that barrel is going to be swirling around up top again and people are going to start talking about Concord and what a piece of crap it is all over again. There's nothing this game can do to change the mentality of the gamers. Short of firing the entire development team, bringing in an entirely new development team, redesigning the characters from the ground up into something that's a little bit more pleasing to the eyes, might have a chance, but honestly, at this point, then it would feel like they're just pandering to people because you didn't listen the first time around, and it's almost like it's a lost cause. And you pair that with the fact that Sony already has another Concord 2.0 game coming out called Fair Games, if it ever does come out. I mean, all we have is one trailer from that from like a year ago, and then no updates from the studios ever since that. You have to wonder, there's a lot of conversations that are going on at Sony and their underlying studios underneath with all this trouble coming from Concord right now. And here's the thing, I was on Hypnotic's live stream the other day and we were talking about how Concord's gonna relaunch and when we thought it would and he was like, oh, maybe sometime mid 2025 and I'm like, oh no, I think it's gonna be sooner than that. I would bet that they could even bring it back holiday 2024 and redesign a few new characters, make it free to play and just try to cash in on a holiday rush for it. But no, after seeing this happen and seeing Sony go into people's consoles and proactively delete it, remove it, and take it away from people without their authorization, it tells me that it is a very dire situation at Sony with Concord, and they know the public sentiment with this game is not going to turn around anytime soon, if ever. At the point that we're looking at with what the player amount was, we're looking at, what, under... 2,500 people at launch with this game and then it just dwindled straight down from that which is completely embarrassing for a major AAA title to just flounder and fall flat on its face. That is unheard of. Like yeah we've seen flops before but nothing to this length. But what happens to the employees at Firewalk as I've referenced a couple times in this video already I keep going back to I couldn't imagine going into work and trying to work and retool this game that you already know is a complete failure and at this point you are a dead man walking. At any moment Sony executives could come down on Firewalk Studios and just wipe the whole team. And how do you go into work with a positive mentality and being excited to make any changes when you know at the end of the day like we all know as much as you might not want to accept it that ultimately that's going to be the outcome that happens with all of this. And I almost think to an extent that that situation not only will definitely spawn a video from me, but will give us some insight of the actual employees at Firewalk and where their passion lies. As I've referenced in previous videos, many of them don't even like video games, yet they work at a video game company. And now we're off to wonder, are they going to try to find a convenient job in the industry somewhere else through their friends and connections they've made? Or are they going to leave the industry and go do something that they actually like so that they don't find themselves making another failure of a game somewhere else again? Will they even put this game on their resume? Like Concord was such a tremendous epic failure that some of these people are even taking it off their Twitter bios. Something that they were proud of, saying that they were putting a flag in the ground saying, yeah, Concord, this game is my magnum opus of my life. I'm so proud of it. Completely fell flat on its face. And now you want to pretend that you were never even a part of it in the first place. Sony is trying to distance itself entirely from the project they see as no longer viable. And while dozens of gamers out there might still hold out some hope for revival, the removal of Concord from players' consoles could very well be the final nail in the coffin for a game that truly never found any footing. Anyways, I'm gonna leave it there. Shout out to the gamer for the source on this one. Holy crap, I feel like that's the first time I've ever referenced the gamer as a source. Maybe there is some hope in journalism out there 
these days, but I wouldn't hold my breath for this happening very often. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you appreciate what I'm doing, hit that join button. And as always, you stay smashing. And as you can tell from the before and after, uh, mine is way cooler. Um, I did this to demonstrate that you can make cool, diverse characters without making them lame or gay. Um, here's the before and after. And as you can see, I moved away from the big bulky armor and went with more of like power enhancement arms and legs. Like maybe her skin's kind of partially bulletproof since she's like an experimental super soldier. Smash, 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 Smash.